What's the deal with the YouTube? It's your boy Jay with the Exotic Kid coming at you guys with another one, man. If you're clicking on this video, if you're not out of just support, uh, you're probably clicking on this video because you're either A, just genuinely curious about the Nerodia species, the uh, uh, water snakes, or you came across one, you're thinking about keeping one, maybe you know where to find one, and you're trying to figure out what would be suitable, what would be ideal. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it and uh, give you a little bit of insight of how I've even obtained this guy. Alrighty, you guys. So this is the Nerodia fasciata, also known as the broad-banded water snake. This snake is probably the least sought after snake uh, of all snakes, I would say. Um, water snakes in general, kind of really more nuisance kind of like the bad luck critters man um these snakes probably get killed more often than not being mistaken for water moccasins and cotton mouths or either or whichever time you use it's the same thing and um they're very closely related and they they do kind of some of the same things so they get mistaken for uh the mildly venomous cotton mouth and or water uh water moccasin so you don't really see them too often uh this species in particular is it just likes to be farther farther away from human involvement period uh so you just it's pretty rare you'll see a broad-banded water snake unless you're going to go look for it uh you're typically going to see just the regular um diamondback water snake or just your regular banded water snake but um so uh, I work for a contracting company, a emergency response team. We, you know, clean up oil spills, clean up waste and all that good uh, jazz. And so on a job, we were out there for a week and, you know, we we're out there for a job or whatever. And we're cleaning up an oil spill and, you know, we lift up this big tank, this big crate container. And what do you know? I see this guy in here, man. And I see him squirming around, man. He's full of oil, man. He, he Even his right eye is kind of looking, I don't know, it's kind of looking foggy, like maybe he may have gotten some in it. That camera's kind of picking that up. I don't know if you could tell. Uh, but yeah, man, so I picked him up in the oil spill, man. I, I kept him in a water bottle till I got home, got off of work, and I cleaned him off with Dawn dish soap. And here he is, two days, three days later. Uh, this is, you know, he barely man he's a neonate man he's a baby little guy so he he stood out to me man very striking animal um like i said water snakes are probably the least sought after snake there is dude and i think it's different and i think that's exactly why it drove it to me, uh drove me to it not only did i want to preserve life and you know conserve conserve life uh but who you know who's keeping water snakes you know what i mean and so i might as well give the insight and try to figure this thing out you know and if you know something i don't get in the comment box let me know you know teach me something this substrate by no means is um is gonna be it's forever home this container is never gonna be it's forever home these things can max out about two and a half three maybe four feet one of the bigger uh water snakes uh more elusive definitely does like i said doesn't like to be around humans too much and uh pretty opportunistic man once they get bigger they'll eat the rodents and the frogs and the uh like i guess you know some of your smaller animals um but for now he's gonna be on rosy reds so like i said this is very very temporary it's probably just gonna be for the next few weeks till i go get him a good water bowl and a bigger container but he'll he'll be on the container life until i can find a legit spot for him look at those tongue flicks let's see if this guy wants to eat man got some rosy reds from the pet shop gonna dump them in here see what we can't do and if not i'll try to tongue feed them directly and hopefully we can do that so so uh, there are several species of Nerodia uh, from east to west coast. Uh, Nerodia is the family of water snakes. Uh, there are about six or seven, maybe even eight different species of water snakes. This happens to be the broad banded, if you haven't already caught that. Uh, it's a native to southeast Texas. Uh, the work site that I was working on was in Houston or Pasadena, if you will um and yeah that's where he was obtained from so 
We're going to try to scramble with these rosy reds and see if I can't kind of feed him one directly and then I'll just throw the rest in after I get him to eat one directly. So give me a moment. Obtained the rosy red thing it's fighting hard. Let's see. So that's the rosy red right there. Just a little uh just little pet shop minnows. Keep in mind this is a wild caught individual. So he knows nothing of you know, being tongue fed. So, this is all a learning curve. Let's see if I can grab another one. Leave that one in there for him. He's gonna dump some of this water. So, with them being semi aquatic, you gotta assume their diet is primarily fish. But as they as they age, they definitely branch out and willing to try other things. Okay, he's definitely recognizing it as food. Scarf that first one down. So I can tell right away, you guys, I'm gonna have to change this substrate uh, just because of how aquatic he is. I do not need all that substrate getting in there and impacting him up. He'll probably be on fish for a while because of how small he is, man. He's a baby, man. Such a little guy. But, um,. That's all right, man. That's the learning curve. That's what we want to experience, man. This this whole... This is all new, man. This is all new to us. So, let's learn together, you guys. Let's figure it out together. Here we go. Here we go. Second rosy red here. Okay, now he's eager. Now he's really eager. This guy was gonna go into a field dirt spot, man. If we didn't do anything, um, he was gonna be completely covered up with dirt, man. I'm trying not to get him to eat any substrate. Oh, too late. All right, so let me go and change the substrate and then we'll get back to the feeding. Alrighty, I think that would definitely do a lot better. I also seen somebody uh, on the internet keeping them this way uh, with that that type of bark substrate. And uh, during the midst of that, he got really irritated and he must on me. So I guess that's definitely one downside I might add of keeping these snakes very easy to keep. Definitely would need an aquatic side, right? For sure. Uh, but <clears throat> I'm 
top of needing an aquatic side, you know, I, I deal with gophers, so their musk is pretty, pretty horrible, but um, water snakes, aquatic snakes, musk is out of this world, a whole nother level, whole nother level. Grab some more fish. Try this one. Let's see if we go for another one. Well, that's probably about it. That's probably all he wants to eat. He's already scarfed down two, and he's got one in his bowl in case he gets hungry later. And I'll actually dump the rest of these in here. So yeah, this is definitely uh, very temporary, but it'll do for the next at least couple months or so. They're, they're not the fastest growing, but they're not uh, slow growers either. So this will do. So. Hope you all enjoyed. If you like brown bed and water snakes, get in the comment box. Let me know. Leave a thumbs up. I'm Jay with Exotic Ed, man. I hope you all enjoy so much, man. I'm out.